is a logistics professional with over 16 years in different roles from process and, and operation improvement to product design and project management. And then she has gained a diverse industry exposure from working with semiconductor, consumer electronics and logistic companies such as ST, Microelectronics, Creative and DHL. So Ruth is an avid programmer, uh, so you can call her a female coder <laughs> and uh, like to learn new coding language during her free time. Wow. Okay, and uh, so Ruth, well, I hope you're getting ready and Ruth going to share with us how she went through a whole career journey of you know having different roles and more specifically how to spot invisible career choices. Uh, you have mentioned a lot of points that I think I, I need to consider in my next career change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it has already been very inspiring uh, listening to them. Uh, so now I have a tall hat to fill. Uh, my topic for today is on how to spot invisible career choices. All right, so for me, my career change has been varied across industries and also various roles in the same industry. Uh, so uh, maybe this will help you to uh, gain confidence uh, to know that change is possible, uh, even with um, not 100% uh, transferable skills uh, and, and the right fit, uh, or, or rather the right requirements uh, by companies, which I will share later on. Right. So just a very quick one about myself. Uh, as you can see from the picture, you see that uh, uh, this nature picture and you see that actually I'm a very adventurous person and I like the outdoors, the nature. Uh, and this, this um, high risk taking and adventurous spirit has somehow translate to my career uh, choices. All right. So I'm someone who is very comfortable with change. In fact, I'm always looking forward to change. I'm trying not to change too much. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that that that, that is. Uh, I'm trying to make more informed or more. Um, I would say like, like what Philip and Samuel has done. Uh, more think through changes, uh, thought through changes rather than haphazard changes. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. On uh, my current role right now, uh, I'm working for an international freight forwarding company, which is a French one. Right. And uh, they. Uh, are operating all over the world and my role is in the uh, business uh, 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 rather regional ma manager uh, managing the uh, business process improvement and also automations uh, across the uh, Asia pack right so in this industry there is a lot of manual processes uh, there's a lot of paperwork and uh, so my, my role is really to look into how to automate uh, all the processes uh, there are standard routine and boring uh, with uh, robots. So this is my latest role right now, right? Uh, and here, just to give you a snapshot of uh, my professional experience, uh, which I will use to illustrate uh, my career change over the past 16 years. Uh, so being an engineering um, graduate, right? So you see that I'm pretty boring. I have a lot of numbers to show, right? <laughs> I'm all about charts and numbers. <laughs> Right. So on the on the y axis, uh, this is where I'm showing uh, the percentage of transferable skills that I brought from previous role when I changed. Right. So uh, I think you can already see, uh, even without hundred percent, it's possible to change. Right. Uh, I graduated with an engineering degree in electrical, uh, and I started my first role as a software developer uh, in ST Micro. Right. So obviously, uh, when you, you just graduated your your amount of uh, transferable skills is minimal right so i only have uh, very basic programming and uh, i somehow interviewed for the role uh, after just reading uh, a book which i still remember it's called dummy's guide for c c programming right so i before just before maybe one week before the interview i crashed on that book <laughs> Uh, just memorized everything I've learned. I brought, I went to the interview and I aced the interview somehow. <laughs> right? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so of, of course I went into the role. Yes, I was very excited to go into the role. Uh, but of course I went into the role uh, with a lot of gaps, right? There's a 90% gap. <laughs> which I'll explain later how I compensated for them. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so after, it, after it being a software developer for about two and a half years, uh, I yeah, I got bored. Yeah, basically I got bored. <laughs> I resigned and I decided to take, actually took a year 
year break before I joined Creative Technology. Right, so that year break, I went to India, I backpacked alone. Uh, and uh, I was then also volunteering with a, a child rights of the a children's rights organization, uh, where I, I really learned a lot um, from the people there. And all this uh, about happiness, right? What is real happiness? People there, they don't have all these things that we have, but they are also very happy. <laughs> right. Yeah, so I, I came back, um, I, I guess, with, with a lot of bonus and confidence from the trip. Uh, that I know that anything is possible, right? As long as you are pursuing uh, uh, the kind of passion that really fits your talent, um, it's, it's, really not, it's, it's really not everything is about money, right? Yeah. So I brought on the attitude uh, with me. Wow. Right. My second, uh, my second role in creating technology, and I was sharing that. Uh, I also interviewed the role without um, the 100% uh, skills required. Yes, um, But uh, basically, the interview, during the interview, I somehow was able to connect with the hiring manager, with the storytelling uh, that I built <laughs> uh, with, with my India trip. I think that has helped. Um, so yeah. yes, so that, that, that works, right? Uh, I think your life experiences also will be able to um, I would say augment the, the the chances of you getting a job in a, in the interview, right? Mm. People look look at your character as well, right? Uh, so after that, uh, I was in creative for a good, uh, I think, four, five and a half years. Uh, it has been a, it was a very uh, interesting job, and I had a lot of fun during the five and a half years. Uh, towards the end of that, um, I uh, somehow hit the. The, the, the ceiling of the company and I decided that uh, I should uh, uh, went to further my studies. Um, so I, I went to study, uh, I went to do an MBA uh, and after that, again, from this part here, I, I would say that um, the next job after I graduated um, is almost like starting from ground zero again. Right, so I, I'm building my career from uh, uh, from the bottom with a different, totally different industry and a different role that has never functioned before. Right, um, so this 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 job here in DHL is a very was a very steep learning curve, uh, but it has also um, taught me like it has also taught me that so with resilience and I think with. Um, uh, with, with the right attitude, we are able to uh, change, right? Yeah, it's just very, very painful. Lah. Yeah, if you ask me thinking back, would I do it again? 50-50. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so for this, uh, yes, it's really just 10%. Um, even though I have studied the uh, uh, MBA, but really the amount of transferable, transferable skills is minimal, right? Because the function itself is something I've never attempted before, right? Uh, so after DHL, it was also a very, very good uh, um, job that I, uh, with DHL, I learned a lot. Um, after five years, uh, I've already built whatever I need to build for the, com for the company, right, as a project manager. Um, that's when, that's why after the end of the five years, I decided to make a change again, right? So usually when I make change, right, it's towards the end where I realize that I have nothing more I can contribute to a company, right? So I, I always make that decision at that point. Right, where I already explore all options with the company and I really have nothing more I can contribute and that's when I decided to change, right? Uh, so with Honours B, uh, the good thing is because uh, I had my uh, logistics background, um, therefore that domain experience has helped to uh, transfer over to this new company uh, and, and therefore I was able to assume the role uh, with 80% uh, transfer transferable skills, right? And then uh, lastly, uh, but unfortunately, honestly, I didn't stay for too long. Uh, there was some uh, uh, politics in the company that I couldn't handle. Uh, so I finished uh, one project and then I moved on, right? Uh, so now I am in this uh, company, Bolori Logistics, as I mentioned just now, is into automation uh, mm -hmm. uh, and business improvement, process improvement and automation, right? Okay, so this is also about 50%. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, even though I left, uh, software development, right, almost uh, 15 years back, right? But now I have come back to IT again. I've come back to use the skills that I have uh, developed way 15 years back and leverage on uh, my current job, right? Yeah, so the skills that you develop along the way, some of them you may not have used it, but you never know that you can always apply to your next uh, 
job search. All right. Uh, okay. So just want to cover how do I compensate for the gaps, right? Uh, yep. So first of all, I think um, the attitude is important. The, the positive mindset, the attitude when you go into a new company, uh, always be prepared that uh, maybe there are some jobs that people don't want to do, but if you're able to prove yourself with those roles, uh, with those tasks, uh, those will help you to gain, uh, I would say, confidence in your, in your new team and in your uh, new hiring manager, right? Uh, so I'm always uh, very uh, gung-ho, you know, when I go into a new company, okay, whatever you ask me to do, uh, I will always try to deliver, right? Even if it's something that people doesn't want to do, right? Um, and also chemistry if you're hiring manager, I think that is also very important when you don't have the relevant skill sets, you need to build very good relationship with your boss, right? Uh, and in many of these roles, as I reflected, I realized that my hiring manager, they were willing to give me the chance. Right, they were willing to give me the uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, to try and the time to make uh, to, to to learn and to try, right? Uh, and also, lastly, will be network and contacts. So if you are going to a new company, uh, so you have to start building uh, the your allies, who are the people that you can connect with, we should connect with that can help in your role, right? So the build this relationship and that will also help you to build your experience in the new company. Right, so if you ask me, uh, besides the technical skills, the domain skills, actually the people management skills is uh, top, right? Mm. To thrive in a new organization when you changed, right? Uh, so here, I just want to take a quick poll. Uh, this is on the topic about uh, career change. Uh, when, we, when we make career changes, uh, there are certain consideration factors that uh, you will con you'll think about. Right, there could be financial, uh, the new company culture, uh, the challenges that you want to face. Uh, so what are your top considerations? Okay, um, am I, are you guys seeing the poll? I'm just not sure if you're seeing the oh. poll. Okay, let me, let me launch okay. the poll. Yeah. Yep, you should be able to see the poll now. Okay. So what okay, is now? I think it makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Just now, the, the stats doesn't make sense. <laughs> I know, right? Yes. Okay. So the question is what uh, Ruth has said. Yeah. Right. Which so is the top. Okay. So the question is what? What is the most important consideration, consideration factor? Consideration factor for your career, career change. change. Mm -hmm. Right. I know there are many. All of us will say all of the above, but uh, no. <laughs> Can you pick one? Can you pick one? Which one? For me, I, 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 I know which one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seems to be a tie, tie between two of them. Mm. Right. So let's see, uh, <clears throat> what's the percentage of people who have responded? 73. Oh, good, good, good. So mm. maybe we can, uh, we, we can stop the poll and then share. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm ending the poll now. So please share the result. Right. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, I can see. Okay. Okay. So we have uh, two factors that are tied. Very tied. Nice. Right. What I can contribute using my past experience and where the new role can lead me in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Very good. Financial is uh, surprisingly not not top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, financial you only have ten, uh, only seven percent, right? And we've got, uh, we've got over hundred of of you who have participated in the in the poll. Only ten of you said that financial is the number mm -hmm. one consideration. Mm -hmm. So that's very encouraging. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is a very deep bunch of people. Yeah. They don't think about money. <laughs> very unique, very unique bunch. <laughs> very unique. Yes, okay. yes. All right. Moving on. Okay. Uh, so I just want to share the, uh, the consideration factors that uh, I consider, right? Uh, factors I consider during my career change. For me, my top is actually what I want and uh, I can learn from the new job. Right, for me, the uh, the learning oppor uh, opportunities has always been top, 
right? Uh, so for me, is uh, like, for example, uh, I, when I want to make a career change, I will always consider uh, what I can learn in that new job. For example, if I want to make my next change now, uh, it could be on the product design, UX design, uh, on the new or technology, IoT machine le learning. And uh, I also want to have experience to lead a, a team, a bigger team. And also I want to train myself to have a startup mindset. Mm. Right, so these are the, you, you, I, I guess the more specific that you can uh, put down your list, the more uh, you will be able to find the right um, career uh, role that you want to look for in your next job. All right. And uh, the next point is on uh, what I can contribute with my past experience. Right. Um, so for me is, uh, for, I still enjoy the, the role that I did before, right? The, some of the skill sets I applied before, like project management, uh, and I love to analyze pro, uh, my process and operations. And I, I also like to do coding, right? So the, a good fit will be somewhere and a new, a new role where it also I will be able to contribute with all these uh, past uh, skill sets, right? Uh, and where the new role can lead me in future, right? Uh, for me, I'm working towards uh, setting up my own business, right? Uh, so therefore, uh, what I have to think about is uh, in this, this, the next role, right, is able to train me in those skill sets uh, that eventually will give me the confidence to set up my own business, right? Uh, and then uh, chemistry in my hiring manager, uh, it used to be taught, um, but as of, I think at this age, I learned to deal with uh, different people. Uh, I've in fact worked with uh, bosses who uh, are very toxic and I was able to work with them. So this hasn't, uh, this has ranked uh, slightly lower now, right? <laughs> but it's still important, uh, still important. If you can control this factor, it's still important. Uh, but to me, it's not so high compared to uh, when I was younger, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, uh, financial to me is also last. Uh, I'm willing to take a pay cut uh, if I'm able to meet the first, uh, four factors. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the last point that I want to share is on contingency planning. Obviously when you make career change, there will be risk and there will be, um, yeah, unexpected things that can happen. Right. Um, uh, and, uh, for me, uh, I learned from my, one of my experience, well, one, one of my change in honors B, right. Uh, so from that experience, I learned how to manage risk, right? I should learn how to manage risk in my next change. <laughs> I should put that down. <laughs> all right. So for me, I will, if I were to do it again, I will list all the possible risks, right? Uh, for a new job change and I'll prioritize them, right? Uh, like what I've done here. And you think about how you can mitigate the risk. And if, even if you try to mitigate, right? And the worst happened, how do you plan for it, right? So in the past, I didn't have this <laughs> mindset, but uh, after my uh, so-called uh, back experience in Honest B, right, uh, I, I started to develop this, this framework for myself, right? Yeah, but always be prepared that when you go to a new uh, job, right, that um, the worst can happen, right? The worst can happen, right? So let's take, for example, um, the first point, what happened if uh, you have already, uh, uh, you, you, you have interviewed for the role and uh, you feel confident about role, but somehow when you enter the role, you still cannot perform. Mm. Right? Uh, and how do you mitigate such a, such a, such a, a risk, right? Obviously during the interview, you can ask to work on a new, a real task, right? So when you work on a real task, uh, hopefully that can already give you some confidence that uh, you are able to perform. But still, if you cannot perform and the worst can uh, does happen, uh, I would suggest that you can speak to your boss to rescope the role. And that was what happened to me when I was in Honors B. Uh, I interviewed for the role. I actually asked to work on a real task, right? And I was confident when I joined the role. But unfortunately, uh, when I joined, I went, when I really joined the company, um, my boss has changed. Uh, so I was reporting a new boss. Uh, and he gave me uh, some responsibilities which I was not able to perform, right? So that was the worst that really has happened. Uh, so I was thinking, okay, I could either quit at that point or I can think about 
how to make it work. Uh, so I decided to speak to the new boss to rescope the role and to uh, uh, to give me the chance to uh, uh, work on a new task so that I can build my confidence back and uh, eventually hopefully take on the additional responsibilities that you wanted me to. Right? Okay, then uh, the second point is on uh, what happened if you, I mean, the other risk, the second risk that could happen would be poor fit to company culture. Uh, that can also happen, right? And how do you mitigate? Uh, you do your research online, you look at glassdoor.com, right? You talk to people who has worked in a company. Uh, obviously, you have to ask the right questions. Uh. So just on the last point on toxic uh, boss, right? Uh, so yes, you can, during the interview, you can try to suss him out, <laughs> him or her, how, asking the right questions. Uh, something like, how do you like to give a constructive uh, criticism and how long has your current team has been in place, you know, things like that. Hopefully can give you some idea whether this boss that you are interviewing with, uh, is he going to be a, someone who can be toxic. Uh, but eventually, if um, the worst really happened, um, don't think too much about the boss, right? Uh, again, try to make it work. Like. For me, it's always uh, trying to make it work, right? Focus on your work itself and you can perform uh, and you put everything in black and white, right? Um, if whatever happens, uh, if uh, the boss continues to be toxic, um, maybe you can approach HR to help, to support, to uh, mediate the situation, right? Uh, okay, so that's all actually from my side. It's a very quick one. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rove.